Hi kids, my name's Nicole and this is Let's Make Art and you're here for a fun project where we're doing something new together. We are painting with acrylic. Acrylic is a new paint that's a little bit thicker. So we're gonna be creating this beautiful, it's gonna say sunset, sunrise, it's a night sky. Oh, night sky. Oh, Keenan's singing. Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> oh, actually, Keenan, can you come back here? Yes. So, you are here, we film together. This is Keenan, he's the film guy. If you hear him, this is who he is. I just want to introduce you. That's Keenan. Okay, so together we are going to be painting this night sky. Now, like I said in the beginning, is the supplies that we're using is we're gonna be using acrylic paint. So if you can grab yours out, if you have a box, if you have some similar type of paint, go and grab that out. You'll see that we're gonna create this bright color and then go darker as we go up. So if you have, I'm using a really bright lime green, so something along those lines, a green and then a blue, a light blue and then a darker blue. And then I'm gonna be using black at the top and then at the bottom for our trees. So those are the paint colors. Then you'll notice that there's white, so I'm gonna be using a white paint pen. And then I'm gonna be using a wider brush that we can create these cool strokes. So paint brush, your paper, and I would definitely have a paper towel. That will help. Okay, now what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna shift these over here. I'm gonna close my black. I won't be using that till the end. But set yourself up now for the first step is raising your hand. I'm going to remember. If everyone can raise your right hand, we're going to say our motto together. So if you can repeat after me, I am brave. I am brave. <laughs> I am kind. I am kind. And I am creative. And I am creative. Let's do this. Huh. Boom. And you can fist pump. You can elbow hit, high five, <laughs> wherever you're at. Just get excited, get in the zone. Now, the first step is I like to get in my artistic mode. You all are little artists here together with me painting this. Now, grab your paintbrush. So the thing with acrylic paint is if you want, actually, if you want to warm up, you can. If you want to do this on a practice paper, you can. But I think that you can do this. I want you to just try it out because I want to show you that it's actually pretty easy. So what we're gonna do is you're going to dip in. So here's my paintbrush. So I'm gonna dip in. I don't need all of my whole paintbrush filled with paint because it's gonna be a lot. I'm just gonna fill about half of it. I'm gonna dip in. And here's the thing is because this is thicker, you might see that it kind of has these, is this an okay spot? Actually, do you wanna bring it down a little bit? Yeah, right yeah. there. Oh yeah. So when I dip in, see how it kind of, it's, it, what is the word? Drip. I wanna say slime. Slime, Cause it it's green. like green slime. <laughs> but it's green slime. So it drips a little bit. So I would have your, your little pot as close as you can to you. So we're gonna start from the bottom to create this bright sun. So this is really cool way to create this ombre effect. And ombre means a gradient. So it goes from color to color. So I'm gonna dip in. And if you have too much, did you notice how I, you, I dipped off to the side? That's how if you ever have too much, you can get a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create these strokes that are sweeping motion. So. This is the only kind of sweeping I enjoy. <laughs> Not the cleaning. <laughs> Not the cleaning. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the bottom of our page and you don't have to go all the way at the bottom because you'll notice that there's black here. So I'm gonna start maybe about here and I'm gonna make a sweeping motion across. So what you can do is you can either go back and forth like that, or you can just paint like this. And so whenever you feel like, oh, I ran out of paint, that's okay. That's why you have more in front of you. You're gonna grab more, and then you're gonna make this sweeping motion across. So one trick that I like to do, because you're using a different brush, so you'll notice this brush is wide. So if you're looking at this, if, you're, if I were to paint from this way, can you notice how my stroke is kind of thinner? Is this green? Can you see that? Yeah, it's bright. Okay. It's a bright green. <laughs> so that stroke is a little bit thinner. But if I move my brush and so I rotate it this way, so do you see how all the bristles are facing, kind of facing the edge of your paper? It's going to create a thicker stroke. So do you guys see that? Wow. So that's one tip if you want to make sure that your brush is facing that way, that will help you make these sweeping motions. 
So I'm going to paint that. So I started with my first color. And you'll also notice that I didn't go all the way to the edge. So you'll see on my final one, I also didn't go all the way to the edge. This is up to you. This is your painting. If you want to go to the edge, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. So paint your first color. So I painted that lime green. So I made these sweeping motions. Then I'm going to move that back and I'm actually going to close that up because I'm done with that color. Close that up, grab my next color, which is the green, set it next to me. And let's see, I am going to wash my brush. Might as well. So I had a little bit of green. So when I wash this, you'll notice if I, if I put this in the water, it doesn't really do anything. I don't know. Can you guys see that? Uh, kind of the bottom of it. There you go. <laughs> so it's still green. So what I need to do is I need to just kind of do the same sweeping motions. Let me move this so you can see. I'm doing the same sweeping motions, but on the bottom of my brush. I'm not jamming it in. I'm just sweeping across. So that way it gets the color off. And if you have a little bit more, that's why I told you to grab a paper towel. And I'm going to actually fold this again. So I'm going to do the same sweeping motions. That way we're keeping our brush really nice. We're being kind to it because it's our tool. It's our friend. It's like sweeping off a pirate's deck. Yes. Uh, the, the, their ship. <laughs> that was Keenan's pirate noise. <laughs> okay, so next color is the green. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to dip in, just dip in about half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the color, let's see, I'm going to put it right next to it. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move down. So can you see how the color is starting to blend into each other? So I'm moving down a little bit and I really like that look of how it's kind of scratchy because when you look at this guy, it has different textures to it. So that's how you do it is I started from the top and then I came down because if you think about it, when you start, you have a lot of paint on this guy. But as you come down, you're going to have a little bit less as you continue to go. So that's how we're going to blend those two colors together. And then what I'm thinking is I might add a little bit more full green to the top here. Let's just do one more strip. Sweep it across. So again, I'm doing that sweeping motion across my page. And here's actually something that this is a cool thing about being an artist is that everyone has a different way of doing it. So if you feel more comfortable, I want to show you another way that you can practice this is if you feel more comfortable and you rotate your paper, which means I'm just going to shift it a little bit. And if it's easier for you to do your motions like this, I'll do it on the next one so you can see. You can do that. So I want to show you that there are different ways to do things. So again, I'm going to clean my brush because I'm done with my green and I'm going to do my sweeping motion on the bottom of my cup. I'm going to do the same thing on my paper towel. Then I'm going to close my green up because I'm done with that. And let's move on to the light blue. I really like that green color, the dark green. It is a really good solid yeah. color. Makes me think of the forest. You can call it forest green for you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm dipping in. And then, so like I was saying, is if it helps you, I'm gonna start to right here, so in front on top of the green, and I'm gonna do my sweeping motions. So I'm going down. And if it's easier, you can just go down. Just do your motions down. Oh. So again, I'm going into my green to blend it a little bit. So let me go a little bit more. So maybe that's easier for you to just do down motions like that. You know what that forest green reminds me of? What? Makes me think of Robin Hood. Oh yeah. I love Robin Hood. Why am I thinking of Robin Hood with a, a orange fox? Uh, because there's a little movie called Robin Hood and it's a cartoon, it's a Disney movie. And he's a fox. Oh, so I'm right. Yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> it's a great movie. <laughs> there we go, that does remind me of that then. Perfect. Okay, I did my blue, or my light blue. Now I want to go to my darker blue. So I'm going to do my same thing, sweep my brush, be kind to it. 
switch my color. Here's the really cool thing about this is your night sky can be any color. If you wanna make this a, a sunrise, you can do warm colors. You can do yellows and oranges and blue. Ye nope, yellows and oranges and reds. <laughs> <laughs> you can make your sky any color that you like. That's the fun thing about it. So again, I started with my solid color at the beginning and then I went this way to blend into my original color. Now, here's the cool thing that we're gonna do a little bit different for this one, is I'm going to take my blue and I'm actually going to do most of this. I'm gonna leave maybe one strip black, or one strip blank so that we're gonna make it black. Because if you're looking at this, this might be more helpful. If you're looking at this, can you see how you have this blue? So it's the same blue, but then we have this color. It's kind of like a dark navy. Oh, yeah. So it's not quite black. Maybe this part is black, but this part's navy. So I might actually do a little bit more. So what we're gonna do, this is a little bit different. If you are used to watercolors, you might be used to mixing the color before and then we paint with it. We're kind of doing this new technique where we're gonna mix it on top of it. So I'm gonna grab my black. And this time what I'm thinking is because it's black, I'm not gonna rinse off my brush. And I'm just gonna dip in. And so I want a solid black on top. But again, I want it to blend in. And so here's another trick that I wanna show you is that think about how hard you were pushing onto the brush or onto the paper. So with my brush, I'm not stabbing into it and pushing and smushing really hard. What I'm gonna do is just like Keenan was saying, when you sweep, if you're sweeping a, a pirate's deck or you're sweeping your home floor, which I'm sure your adult would love if you did do that, <laughs> is I'm going to lightly sweep. So that way my bristles aren't pushing too hard into it and the blue is just getting a really light, faint black on it. Can you see that? I love that. So it's blending into it really, really slightly and then it's creating that really pretty navy. So that is, I think, I'm good. I really like how that blended. I am done with that. So you're gonna wash off your brush again. Actually, I guess you don't have to, but I'm gonna do it anyways. It's a it good is, practice. It's good practice, yeah. Okay, so now the next thing is that we are going to paint the bottom of this. So what you're looking at is a, it's like a silhouette. And a silhouette is if you're looking at something and it's, it's really dark because there's a light behind it. And so it creates this black. So although the trees that in our painting that we're creating might not be black, we're creating that look as if we were looking at them in real life. So that's why they're this black color. If you wanna make them green, you actually can. They can be any color. I'm just gonna show you how to make them with this black color. Now, the only thing that I want you to make sure is that your green is really dry. So I noticed that my lime green, I think is a little bit wet. Let's see. I'm just gonna blend it in. So I'm just gonna blend that in a little. It was just a little bit wet. I think we're good now. Yeah. We're good. Okay, so just make sure it is dry to touch. Then grab your paintbrush again, and we're gonna paint the bottom. Is this a okay spot? If you wanna push it a little to the right, actually. Okay, I can do that, definitely. Thank you. Okay, so remember what I said is have your little pot close to you, so that way it's a little bit easier and you're not reaching so far. And just help yourself out. Is what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dip into my black and I want to paint this whole bottom. So what's really cool is that this way we know as the enjoyer of the, your painting is that we know that it's in front of your sky. So that's why I'm gonna paint it and have it go all the way to the edge. Now, what I actually would suggest to do is grab either a piece of paper or something to put underneath so that way, if you do paint off the edge, it's okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this and I'm gonna do the same sweeping motions like I did. 
and I'm going to go all the way to the edge. Like that. And so when you're doing this, maybe go, you can decide how thick your bottom layer is going to be. I'm going to make it about that thick. And then what we're going to do is we're going to add the trees. So the reason why I left it like that is I want a little bit of my really bright lime green to still show up. So I don't want to cover all of it. I just want to cover the bottom strip of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually hold your brush the same direction as if you were sweeping these motions. But what we're doing is we are creating thin strokes going up. So it's as if all of these bristles came together and then it's just making one stroke. So it's making a thin stroke. And so I'm gonna draw the trunks of my tree all the way across. Then when you look at this is that if you'll notice on my original one is that it has this kind of look where it looks like it's going in like this. So you are a master at this and you're gonna create that by making the edges taller than in the center. So I kind of did that here, but I wanna make it a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back in and I'm gonna grab my paint. I don't want too much, so I'm gonna scrape it off. And I'm gonna draw a couple more, but I'm gonna draw these outside ones just a little bit higher. Do the same thing here. So I'm gonna draw these a little bit higher or taller. So then you can see it kind of goes like this. We're not making it perfect, we're just kind of helping it out a little bit. Then the fun technique is, I don't really know what to call this, so if Keenan wants to make up a name, mm, we can do this. Let's see what it is. But what we're gonna do is we are going to make the trees, but do you, can you see how it has this, it has this cool effect where it looks like it's sprinkled in. The sprinkle technique. <laughs> we can call it that, is I'm gonna take my brush and what I'm gonna do is I'm going to actually dabbing, oh. but I'm gonna push into my brush. I'm not pressing super, super hard because if I were to push really hard, it would, I'm, I'm not being very kind to my brush. So I may reshape it. The cool thing about brushes is that you can reshape it. So I'm just reshaping it. But what I wanna do is I just want a little bit of paint. I don't want a lot. So I know you can't tell, but I just got the very tips of my brush because that's all we're using for this sprinkling technique. And I'm so what I'm gonna do is I am, again, lightly pushing and using all of those hundreds of bristles as my friend. And it kind of creates this cool sponge-like effect. And so these are, our tr are the leaves on our trees that we are creating. So again, I'm lightly dabbing. So it's either the tap tap technique, the sprinkle technique, or the sponge technique. The All sponge of the brush. above. Yeah. Which one do you guys like? Yeah, you tell us. <laughs> so again, I'm just kind of going around. I'm adding tree or adding the leaves to my brush. If you want more, you can go in and get a little bit more. I'm going to scrape off. And what I'm gonna do is I'm looking at the bottom. So when I look at this, I don't know if Keenan can see this, but I can see my original line that I painted. Yep. So here's a trick. If you add more black, I'm gonna add more leaves to that bottom row. But what I'm doing it is I'm not drawing a straight line. I'm just adding these leaves at kind of different points. So what it does is it helps the eye not see that straight line. So it kind of did it disappear? Yeah, totally. So nice. then it has that illusion or that effect. So that's what you're doing. You're the master of this painting. You're creating this and you're bringing it to life. So again, I'm dabbing. How's that feel from up there? I like it. It looks good. Okay. Awesome. Now, you can, you don't, as you see, you don't need to do too much to it. So you can go and add a little bit more if you want, but I feel good about it. If Keenan says it feels good, I'm gonna listen. I meant to say magnificent. 
Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> so I'm going to close back up my black. Now we're actually, we're done with the painting part. So I'm going to clean my brush again, sweep the bottom of my cup to get it off. And Look here's how the different thing. your paint water looks. Whoa, it's dark now. Here's another cool technique that I want to show you as you're taking care of your brush. Is I like to fold my paper towel, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my brush inside, so not smushing it. I'm laying it, and then I'm gonna fold it, and then I'm gonna pull. Do it again. Lay here, fold, pull. Or you can go like this and scrape. But that way, I'm kind of squeezing the water out instead of just going like this really, really hard. <laughs> Hopefully that helps. Want to be kind to our brushes. Okay, now that I'm done with the paint, you are going to grab your paint pen. If you don't have a paint pen, you can use a white gel pen if you have that. I'm trying to think if there are other, any other tools that you may have handy. You might have white acrylic paint. I was going to say that. Thank you. You You're read welcome. my mind. If you have white paint, you could definitely do this with a smaller brush. So anything white or lighter than your painting. Now, if this is your first time using a paint pen, the one that you have, if you have our box, is when you open it, you won't be able to use it right away. So what I'd like you to do is shake it maybe about 10 seconds, count it one to 10, shake it. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to press into it and hold and push. Count for about another 10 seconds and then lift up. And then eventually you might need to repeat that one to two more times. Eventually you'll start to see the white paint come through because what's happening is the paint is all the way at the top. So that's why you have to kind of wake it up and bring it to the tip so that you can use it. So I already did that and mine is all set to go. So what I'm going to do is I am going to remove this. Now we are going to paint our, or not paint, we already painted. We're going to add stars and a moon to it. And moon might, we might have a ding bingo coming up at the side. Don't know which side. But I realized if you also are playing along with us, we, and you have our zine, we have a fun game that if you flip to the, let's see, we're towards the front. If you flip through, you'll see a page that has bingo. And let's see, I definitely said moon. Mm -hmm. I said, I'll say a few different words. Mm -hmm. But when you see that, so when I said moon, draw a moon in this. That mm -hmm. way you're playing bingo. And so as we are doing all of these projects together, I think you might win bingo. So that's the fun little thing I wanted to say. Oh, the other thing is that after, so you'll have, you'll see that you have the, the sheet to show you the steps. Then if you flip, I want you to look at, and for everyone looking at this, let me move all this so I don't get it dirty, is if we're looking at this, these are the moon phases. And so it's a really cool thing. And what I said is if you have this book, I'm sure you're, you might be painting in the daytime right now, but when it's nighttime, go outside and look up, which is the name of this project, look up and see if you can find the moon somewhere in the night sky. And what I want you to do is I want you to draw that. So you can draw, there's so many different shapes and you can also write, I said, write the date. So you'll notice that every day it's just a little bit slightly different. So I wonder, I should have looked at the moon last night. I don't remember seeing it. it might, there are a lot of clouds here in Missouri. <laughs> there are a lot of clouds. So you might not be able to see it. If you, if you don't, that's okay. There's, not, there's nothing wrong with that. Don't worry about that. But, so you can choose one of these shapes. So it's really cool is you start with a full moon and then as it, as actually it moves around, it, the shape will change. And so there's different names for it. I actually learned this as I'm learning with you all, the gibbous. Might not be saying that right. The gibbous? Yeah. Neat. It's one of the shape. There's the first quarter. The one that you might be familiar with, with I'm most familiar with, is a crescent moon. And so the fun fact about moons is that, and I wrote it down here. Did you know this, Keenan? Is that the moon does not make its own light. Oh, I did know that. What we're looking at is the reflection from the sun. So that's what actually we're drawing. So that's why it changes. 
And so what we're going to do is because we, everyone orbits in, up, in the, up in the big sky. So you're going to pick which one you want to draw. Maybe all, let's see, I originally did a crescent moon, or I mean, I did a full moon. Maybe we'll try a crescent moon this time. So I'm gonna draw this shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move this over. Maybe I'll have this next to me. So I have my white pen. If you wanna test to make sure that it works, oops. Okay, it works. So again, I want you to make sure that this is dry. I think we're, we're good to go. Nice. Okay, now when you are drawing your moon, you have so many different ones you wanna draw. If you wanna draw, actually what you can also do is, do I have a pencil? I have a white pencil. I'll oh, use that. No, that's perfect. A white pencil is actually perfect. But if you can do this with a regular pencil. Is if you want to draw and sketch it out first, you can do that as well. So I'm going to draw the crescent moon. So I'm going to look at the shape. So what I'm going to draw first is I'm going to draw like a half circle. So I'm going to draw over here. I don't think you guys can see that. Maybe I'll draw with this since you can't see it. That is kind of hard to see. Yeah, it's okay. I got gotcha. you. So I drew half of a circle. So pretend like the full circle's over there. I just drew half of it. Oh, and tricky, then, tricky. so that's the outside. So that's this bottom part that I'm drawing. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the top part of this one. So what that is, is I'm going to, let's see. You can either start from the top or the bottom, either one works. But what you wanna do is the trick is is I'm gonna draw a similar shape. So it's a similar shape, but if you notice, it's thinner, so there's less moon right here and less moon right here. So think of less moons at the ends and more moon in the middle. So that's why there's more right here. Looks like a big smiley face in the sky. It does. Or I saw a banana. Oh, a banana. Oh, now I'm hungry. <laughs> a banana sounds really good for a that snack right now. Good. Banana and peanut butter. Have you ever done that? I don't know. You slice up bananas, and then you get a little piece of peanut butter. Hmm. Might be a good snack. Maybe a little too healthy for Keaton, <laughs> <laughs> but it's good. Okay, so then once you have your outline, is I'm going to color, color my moon in. Maybe you do add a smiley face to it. Actually, we can because what we're gonna do next is we're going to draw our stars. Stars. So maybe I just do it for fun. Is I add a smiley face there. I'm just gonna add dots around. So they're really just light dots. I'm just adding them anywhere around. I'm kind of moving around. Then what you can do is you can add sparkling, twinkly stars. So the way I like to do that is I draw a line and then a line across. So you're kind of making an X and then you can add dots to the ends of those. That's one way. Another way is we're gonna, let's see, I'm gonna make a line, other one over here. So I'm gonna do the same thing, is draw an X, and then I'm draw another X on top of it. But see how there's open space? I realize, am I an okay spot? Yep, you're in a great spot. Okay, so I drew an X there. I'm gonna draw another X on top of it, but in those open spaces. So I'm gonna draw an X like that, like that. And then do the same thing and add dots to the ends of them. Maybe just the big X, or you can do all of them looks like a cool little snowflake that's what i was gonna say yeah so you can do those all different shapes all different sizes you can add them wherever you like then here's the fun part is that this is your painting so you can make up your own constellation constellations are more stars that can create our eye kind of looks and sees something different. So what if we make for, in the original one, I was making this for Ava and 
I drew, drew dots and stars so that my constellation was her name. So maybe you make this for yourself if you want to write your name, if you want to gift this to someone, which is the kindest thing that you can do is you're making this. Think about the person, maybe it's the person who got you this box or your friend that you want to say hi to that you really, really miss, which actually would be a really cool thing. That'd be awesome. Because you can say, you can write on the back, this could be a, a really big card, and you can say, let's look at the night sky tonight and see what we see. Yeah. So, think of a name, and what I'm gonna do is, I think what the, what the best way to go about this is actually, is I'm going to start with the name first. So instead of drawing my stars, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the name first. So the really cool thing is what I'm thinking of is, we have a Facebook, family, a Facebook group that you can share what you do. So I've seen so many of you already doing some of the projects. Nora, I think, um, had posted and shared our motto. So Nora, I'm going to make this for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write her name. So what you can do is you can decide where you want it. Do you want it over here? Do you want it here? I'm going, I see kind of a space right here. So I'm going to draw it right there. So I'm going to write her name using my white pen, N-O-R-A-H. So I drew her name, and then what I'm gonna do is, so it looks like it's a constellation and it's also twinkling, is at the ends, I'm gonna draw either dots or I'm gonna draw X's that it looks like it's twinkling in the stars, in the sky as well. So I'm gonna add those to the ends of her names because there's kind of an end right there. And the fun thing is that then you can go around and you can bring it to life even more. So I'm gonna add more stars around her name. as it's raining outside. It is raining, it's really loud. I love it. I do too. So add more stars, maybe add a few more X's. I think we're good. Looks great. Okay, that is it. You have, you created something, you created a masterpiece and I'm so excited. I wanna see what you created. Keenan wants to see. We all are a family here. We wanna see what you created. Share it. Share it, sharing is caring. So we have a Facebook group called Let's Make Art Kids Projects. So join along, share that. Um, continue to be brave and kind and creative and we will see you for our next project next week.